so you are joining me at the bottom of my garden on the autumn equinox it's uh, the 22nd of september 2020 and today is the day where the sun will very briefly align over the equator and we have um, this equal amount of night as we do day so the term equinox comes from the latin equi meaning equal and nox meaning night and the year is divided into four quarters so we have two equinoxes we've got the spring equinox and the autumn equinox and then we've got the solstices we've got the summer solstice and the winter solstice and so um, we are moving into the next quarter so the equinox marks the last day of summer and the beginning of autumn and it's that point where everything is perfectly balanced the, the amount of night time we have tonight is exactly the same as the amount of daytime that we have today but the flip side of that coin is that from tomorrow the nights will begin to become longer than the day so it is a kind of melancholy time where we're looking back at the summer with fondness and we're looking towards the winter and the darker nights and the colder nights so the North Pole today is gonna well from tomorrow is going to start tilting forwards away from the Sun and that will favor the people in the southern hemisphere to have better weather but that will mean that we will start to notice changes around us changes in shadows um, the, obviously the days getting shorter the position of the Sun in the sky uh, you've already probably noticed it I mean I used to get sunshine in my little office a lot earlier in the day now and I don't get that much now so um, it's the 22nd today it's also the turn into Libra away from Virgo and Libra is the weighing scales so again that is all about balance here it all relates um, and traditionally this time between the autumn equinox and Halloween or Samhain as it's known in the pagan calendar is known as Mabon and um, that is the pagan festival time of this time of year so um, on the equinox in autumn there's big gatherings or probably not this year because of the whole C word um, <laughs> there's big gatherings at Castle Rig Stone Circle and Stonehenge here in the UK where lovely people go and see the sunrise um, through the stones which they were originally a kind of a calendar so they align with the sun moving up through them at certain points in the year um, there would be big harvest festivals at this time of year because it is the last bringing in of the harvest um, there would be bonfires and feasts and gatherings um, and it was just a lovely time and people were making the most of these sunny days like today knowing that they were coming to an end so um, the full moon nearest to the equinox is known as the harvest moon so we've already had that this year the next full moon is a little later on but it is a feeling of melancholy at this time of year there's migrating birds moving away flying away uh, we can see winter birds beginning to land from the colder arctic regions like the pink footed goose um, and the fields the fields are looking empty but the flip side of that is that the stores are full traditionally the larders would be full and there would be great feasting so if yin and yang could ever be a time of year it would be now perfect balance light and dark positive and negative all in perfect balance so um, also this time of year creatures are beginning to think about hibernating so whilst they're not necessarily hibernating just yet they'll be filling their tummies up ready to go and burrow away and the butterflies are already flittering off trying to find somewhere for them to cocoon into so you might find the little green lace wings coming into your house and um, as they go into hibernation dormant mode their green colouring goes brown don't tip them out just let them be they're quite happy in there and they'll reward you when they wake up by eating all aphids and small little flies that are annoying and you can watch how they're going to change back to green in the spring um, so at this time of year in Greek mythology from the equinox 
to Yule with all the uh, winter solstice, this was the time where Persephone was taken back down to Hades, her husband who stole her away from the earth um, for her three months in the underworld. And Demeter, her mother, who was distraught about this, um, she was the goddess of the harvest. Um, she refuses to do her work while Persephone is down in the underworld. So that's the story of why nothing much grows in winter. And um, pomegranates. Pomegranates are very popular at this time of year and they're in season and pomegranates are the food of the underworld. So that's where that ties in. But also as a health benefit, pomegranates are great for men for their prostates. So pomegranate juice or as much fresh pomegranate as you can have, really good for your uterine system, uh, urinary system. Um, and I'm just writing down what else I've got to tell you about. Okay, so the cutting of the corn in the fields, I love this. Um, the corn fields were thought to have a spirit to them. Sometimes it was male and sometimes it was female. And so the moment that the last sheath of corn that was cut would be a big thing so everybody would stand around and the allotted person would go and chop the last sheath down and um, they would say a prayer or something in gratitude for the harvest and for that moment and then it was thought that um, they would make corn dollies so that the spirit of the corn had somewhere to store itself for the following until the following year so that's where corn dollies come into it and over here I gathered a whole bunch of wheat um, in the, around the Lamas time in order to make some corn dollies this year with my little girl. So I have some of the spirit of the corn here. Um, what else have I got to tell you? So um, energetically there is this big shift at this time of year and it's a time where it's all about slowing down now like the badgers and the foxes that will be slowing down or the big bears if you live over there in Canada or somewhere gorgeous like that. Um, and it's a time for self-care and for nurturing yourself because uh, from this point on, we are more vulnerable to coughs and colds, which I'll come to in a moment. Um, but it's a mentally draining time as well when the nights start to creep in and we lose the serotonin balance from the light stimulating it as much. So we need to really take time to bring self-care into our day and make these months ahead more acceptable to us mentally. So um, it's a time to adopt the Scandinavian feel of hygge. And that is all about embracing coziness. So lighting candles, getting your big woolly blankets out, um, hot chocolate, everything that you can think that makes you feel cozy. It's time to do that. It's a good time to prepare your house, clean it, decorate it, so that it is a nice place to be over winter. Um, I like to smudge my home in the, as autumn comes in and change the energetic shift in the house. And uh, this is a smudge stick that I made with um, mugwort and lavender. So I have been saving this and this will last me probably a year because it's a big old thing. So when little one comes home tonight, we'll be doing that. Um, immunity then. So not long after the equinox, somewhere around October the 10th, October the 14th, as the North Pole tilts away from the sun, it's physically impossible for the UVA rays to come in at the right angle to make the vitamin D from your skin into your kidneys. It's, in, it's physically impossible to make vitamin D from the sun. So it's so important. The NHS, the National Health Service here in England, do say supplement over the winter with vitamin D, especially if you are a person of colour because it is so much more difficult for you to gather um, vitamin D throughout the year. Your skin is different. It, it reacts differently with the processing of vitamin D. So everybody should have vitamin D. It's needed for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of processes and it will keep your immunity strong. So I know what my vitamin D levels are, I've had them tested and I take 5,000 international units a day. So it's pretty hard to overdose but if you're 
uh, worried, do get it tested first so that you can assess that. But please get some vitamin D down your necks. Uh, vitamin C is also really important this time of year and something that can really build your immunity up is reishi mushrooms. They're fantastic. So look into those. You can buy them in capsule form rather than eating mushrooms, which is a bit difficult. Um, so uh, other things you can have, elderberries if you've got any, you can also buy those in tablet form and garlic. Garlic is amazing at building your immunity up. Um, again, you can get that in supplement form. So uh, it's a time for soups, a wholesome vegetable soups. Um, and I like to make autumn teas, which I make with berries, fruit peel, thyme, um, calendula flowers. What else do I put in there? Ginger. Ginger is really important at this time of year. Um, so a couple of questions for you then to think about. Is there anything that you would like to achieve by the winter solstice? What is it? Go do it. Um, and secondly, what can you do? What can you do to self care, so to self nurture yourself over the forthcoming months? And do that because that's important. So, fun things to do then. So, um, walking walking out in nature, go as much as you can before the weather changes and we start to get the windy, wet autumn season, right, November time. Make the most of this glorious weather. Notice the changes. I've got, you can't see it, but I've got big holly bush behind me here and it's just starting to turn orange, the berries, and I've been watching those throughout the year from the little white flowers and now they're, they're on the orange colour. Uh, so go out, look around you, see how things are changing. Um, feast with friends. I know we have certain restrictions, but you could do this in some way at the minute. Um, everybody bring a dish, have a feast, have a bonfire, have a barbecue, do whatever you can to make the most of this weather. It's a time of gratitude because uh, historically it was a time of being very grateful for the harvest. So be grateful, have fun and make the most of the weather. Um, eat pomegranates. I'm just going to pick my list up here so I don't keep bending down. Pomegranates, plant bulbs. That would be really good like miniature irises or miniature daffodils and then you keep them in the house and then by Christmas they'll flower and look beautiful. Um, hedgerow jam, that's a good one. Whatever you find just chuck it all in and see what it tastes like. I guarantee it'll be nice. Um, make an autumn wreath, that's always really nice. So on your walks just pick what you see, a few pine cones, a few acorns, some nice um, some pine needles, whatever you can see that you think is beautiful. Rose hips, hawthorn, um, make apple cider. So that doesn't have to be alcoholic. Apple juice with cloves and cinnamon, uh, some juniper berries is nice, some orange peel, boil it up, delicious. Make your house smell nice as well. Um, donate food. That's where the Harvest Festival tradition came, where we all used to take a can of beans into school and then they'd get shipped off to old people. I can remember doing that as a kid. Um, these days we have food banks, but donate some food. Um, it's a great time for planting trees or planting a bush. So plant something and look forward to it flowering the following year. Um, something I like to do with my little one is a gratitude walk. So I take dried rose petals in a little bag and things we see that we, are, we find beautiful, we lay a rose petal there for it. So a beautiful tree that we often admire, we'll put a rose petal there. Uh, but you could do whatever, you could just touch the tree, say hi. Um, and then activities with kids, I've got some things to show you here. So um, things you could do is leaf rubbing, nature crowns, but here's some stuff that we've done over the years. I've just got to bob down because it's fell off. Um, so you dry your leaves and you make them all glittery. You can hang those up. Um, dry your leaves and you can get a nice silver pen and decorate them. Um, we like the little beads that you iron over. So we've got leaf hammer beads, I think they're called, and a little mushroom. And then I get a big old twig from the garden and we hang all these things on it. Uh, and then I like to get some treasured autumn books that I get. I've just got these out the loft this morning. Bella will be so happy when she sees them this evening. So um, the autumn story from Bramley Hedge, 
That's lovely, all these little mice that live in the hedgerow. Uh, Foggy Friday, which is all about the fog coming in, and that's, that's a good one. But these two are just gorgeous. This is Harvest by Chris Walderher, and the pictures in this are so lovely. It's just what I want my garden to look like one day. Um, and our absolute favourite is Wild Child. So this beautiful sprite is actually autumn and her mother sort of folds into the hills and uh, there's a really nice series of this uh, the winter weights one is the one that comes down in the winter so um it's a time where we all mark in our house and when bella was very little i made this garland with all these little felt leaves on this goes up every year on the equinox much to my husband's disgust he hates it he doesn't like all the dangly things i put up but he has to put up with it so enjoy your equinox i'm going to come back and talk to you about michaelmas which is on the 29th so not far away michaelmas was also an important date but i'll talk about that next time so have a great day it's lovely and sunny enjoy bye